We are on the precipice of the rollout here in terms of the vaccine across the pond. It could begin uh, tomorrow here, a little bit longer delay here in the U.S. As Dr. Fauci has always stressed, the gold standard of testing and safety when it comes to rolling these things out here in the U.S. But overall, investors are continuing to try and calculate when the return to normal will come. We got the update from UBS uh, looking at the market action we should expect off this return to normal, uh, targeting about 4,100 in the S&P next year. Uh, for more on that return to normal, I want to bring on our next guest here with his thoughts on what investors should be thinking about. Uh, Anik Sen here is Pine Bridge Investments Global Head of Equities, and he joins us now. Uh, Mr. Sen, it's good to have you on here to chat. Uh, I guess first off, your expectations as we continue to track how long it's going to take for these vaccines to reach the public uh, at mass here to really reach that herd immunity. What's your expectations heading into next year? Well, I, I'm no expert on the vaccine rollout, but uh, I think I, I would go along with the uh, consensus view is that by the first half of next year, we should have mass vaccinations around the world. I think that is the general market consensus following you know, what we've been hearing over the weekend from uh, experts in the CDC and other areas. And to Zach's point earlier, um, I mean, how much of, of that, the optimism coming through from the vaccine has already been priced into the market right now? It, it, you know, I ask that because it's interesting to see last week we were talking so much about how the market is looking past uh, the most recent surge we're seeing here in the U.S., and yet where you where you look at things are trading today, it does feel like that's still continuing to weigh on investors' minds, especially as we've got more and more states uh, reimposing restrictions. Well, this is, of course, the second, if not the third wave in many parts of the world. So I think the market has seen this movie before, and, and indeed the market is looking through. Um, short term, of course, there are some uncertainties in, in terms of the trajectory of the of the pandemic. Uh, and short-term uncertainties in terms of the policy response. But I think the market is getting more comfortable uh, that we should see a stimulus bill in the next few days, uh, well before the year end. I think that is very badly needed as uh, a lot of the uh, past stimulus starts to expire. Uh, but I think, you know, to your first question, how much is priced in? Uh, this market has been a very narrowly driven market this year by a handful number of stocks, uh, in fact, indices around the world have become extremely concentrated. And um, what we've seen so far is that the entire market has been driven uh, by a narrow group of mega cap stocks and a narrow group of visible growth stocks. So uh, there is plenty of market opportunity left. Um, you know, we are very bullish about 2021. And um, we are in many ways approaching a, a number of tipping points where CEOs and CFOs of companies uh, are now looking uh, for the next several years in terms of being able to invest, uh, not having been able to do very much literally for the last three or four years. Yeah, Anik, I mean, I guess we were hearing that a little bit uh, last week, too. We chatted with EY about confidence coming from the C-suite and how, uh, you know, those leaders and thinkers might be looking to invest here next year. But to, to return to the point in terms of your concerns that we could see a pullback in the short term here, do you think that there are enough tools in the toolkit right now? I mean, we've been having this discussion about uh, Jerome Powell and, and what that battle back and forth with Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin looks like in terms of summing that Fed support getting taken off the table here. Uh, what do you look to to maybe stop or limit the downside risks that are there right now? Is it is it all on stimulus right now? Because it's a it's only basically a week that Congress has to act. Well, in the very short term, you know, it is a stimulus. Uh, in the very short term, uh, the the ability for uh, many households to uh, make it through over the next few weeks is dependent on the stimulus, and I think that is why you're seeing some of the confidence uh, surveys beginning to weaken uh, in the most recent days. But I think, as far as the market is concerned, uh, looking beyond the very short term. Uh, it is quite clear that there will be some kind of a package that comes through. It really is more about the timing. And Anik, we've been talking so much about um, these stay-at-home trades, although I don't know if we can even just keep calling it that, but these names like Azum that have really seen a huge upside this year as a result of this big shift towards uh, digitization. Uh, of course, the cloud space included in that as well. What are some names that you're particularly particularly keen on right now that you think provide good value for investors? Not those who have seen these huge valuations at this point, maybe potentially a little expensive to get in, but ones that you think are really good opportunities. 
You know, it's a great question, and I and we we have been saying for a long time that digitalization is a is a very very important theme uh, across so many industries. And you know, the names that uh, that you've been talking about, you know, are really the the kind of the obvious obvious names, the stay and hold beneficiaries. Uh, but really, digitalization has been accelerated by this pandemic, and where companies have had, you know, let's call it five-year plans, those plans have been accelerated to an investment period, which is now relatively short over the next two to three years. So we think that uh, across a whole range of industries, digitalization is is not just a nice to have, but it's almost become a mandatory imperative where companies have to do this uh, in order to stay competitive, be competitive. Uh, and even stay in business uh, over the long run. Um, we see a huge number of uh, companies where um, we think that digitalization will change their businesses, but it's not just a, a sufficient condition. You know, it's a necessary condition, but uh, it's, it's, it goes hand in hand with the strength of the business. It goes hand in hand with the strength of the governance of those companies. So it's, it's definitely an important aspect. But it is an aspect that I think will play through to, to very significant investments, uh, we think, really, really in a very shortened time frame over the next three years or so. Yeah, it will lead to a lot of happy investors as well who've seen a huge return so far this year. Anik Sen, Pinebridge Investments Global Head of Equities. It's good to talk to you today. Thank you for having me. Bye.